Welcome to Future Strike, everybody. I'm Cliff. I'm Spencer. Happy Sunday. Yeah, so uh, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be doing another real-time reaction episode where Spencer here is going to uh, show me some uh, design concepts for level and uh, some characters and goons that are gonna be inhabiting that level. And I'm gonna react in real time. Okay, well, without further ado, I think uh, Spencer, this is on you to show me some, show me some business. All right, here we go. So the level today is the airship. So the airship is a giant steampunk zeppelin, and it's with a passenger vehicle and like industrial cargo cargo transport, and it's connected to places like we'll come to these levels later on. There's like a remote outpost where the airship stops, and it can also like take you to the city and stuff like that. Um, so we're looking at here are the concept images for the kind of default stages. So on the right, we have kind of the um, embark stage. So as you see, you kind of have got the big ship here. And then this is like where all the passengers are boarding. And so the thought is mm -hmm. like, you know, in the beginning, you're kind of on the dock there, right? And there's like people around messing it up. Um, and then that would be followed on the default path by then, you know, you board the ship and you get on the main deck here and that's on the left. And so, you know, this is kind of like the side of the vessel where some people are like sitting and walking. Mm -hmm. and there's also like the dining hall because it's kind of like a like a part of the ship is like kind of like a cruise ship, you know? And so there's like the big hall with like all the people. Um, all right, pause, initial thoughts about the the concepts here. I mean, I love the, these are just the most, you know, unusual looking crafts and people and again the eeriness the uncanniness of the art is just you know striking i want to i want to be there i want to be working my way through that landscape of people or or creatures or or robots that don't quite look <laughs> how they should but in the right kind of way so, yeah they're just they're, they're just shapes really yes like yes you get the yes. feel of like people like you know that there's like kind of a lady with the you know whatever that kind of skirt is called with yeah. like, like a hoop yeah. skirt or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like the big hats, the sort of yeah. steampunk style, like eight, you know, what is it? 19th century style hats, but they're all sort of like robotic at the same time, which is a, I like yeah. that, that collision. So there's lots of that. I mean, that's one of the themes we saw that last time in Junktown. I mean, it's one of the themes that like I'm really attracted to is kind of like the fusing of like different times and mm -hmm. places together. Right. And so I sort of really like that mix. Um, so it's part of what I was going for. What I, I like the idea of is there's this bustling dining hall going on and people are eating and they're laughing and there's their forks are in the air and they're, you know, having this yeah. raucous good time. But meanwhile, in the foreground, there's like a guy battling, you know, through goon after goon. But meanwhile, in the background, everybody's just having a merry old time, you know. That's the idea. Yeah, yeah. Like it's that. kind of chaos, right? Like in the, like this is a chaotic scene, right? It's like, you know. Yeah chase and brawl through the airship right now i guess this is a question and i probably should know the answer but uh do you foresee in these kind of bustling scenes to be adopting any of that those tropes from the beat-em-ups where you know you can pick up a bottle and throw it or or you know what i mean kick like yeah. a kick a chair and it you know bops a couple guys off or like how do you you know I'm glad that you mentioned that because I have been thinking about that. I love that idea actually in the beat em up. I think it would be so fun to have like some like destructibles or other things, right? Like, yeah, as you say, like you kind of like kick a chair and, you know, stun somebody, you know, right. This kind of thing. Um, I think that'd be fun. You know, I guess my worries, and this is a silly thing to worry about right now because we're just imagining it. I wonder technically how difficult that is. Does that like really complicate yeah. things? But look, it seems like it should be possible. And that would be hilarious to like, <laughs> like you're taking on like three goons and like, you know, knocking them into tables and the table is shattering. And then you pick up the bottle and you like throw it, you know, the one behind you, like so exciting, right? It's yeah, that's really fun. Um... Before going further, just quick review of the level structure. 
um, there's the default path. And that's kind of what I showed here. So like embark to the main deck, to the dining hall. And then at the end of the default path, you have you will sort of, you know, encounter either Virgil or Meg here. Um, if you're quick, then there's also kind of the path down to Willow, and we'll come to all of them in a second. But then there's also the perfect path, which is kind of the gold route where you move up to, you know, the cargo deck, the after deck, um, or the ultra path, which is you're very, very fast in the first stage, and then you're perfect in the second stage, and then you go directly to the boss, right? So there's just kind of different routes. Um, that's the level structure, but then we'll, mm -hmm. we'll come to the boss stages in, in right in here. Okay. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. So, so yeah. you can be, so you're starting off, everyone is starting off in Embark. That's right. You start in the same place. Now, if you are fast, but not perfect, and you get into cargo, now you're, you're obviously your uh, health is, carries through, right? So that's what I'm thinking. Maybe there are ways to recover health, but yeah, the idea, I think the idea is like, you haven't been hit, right? Or you haven't okay. taken damage, I should say, right? Yeah, so yeah, be yeah. Very yeah. good. So you, if you're fast but get hit and embark, you're still not going to go to cargo directly. No, you can't. So my thought is that in cargo, if you're very quick, or excuse me, my thought is that in embark, if you're very quick, you can't, even if you get hit, you can move into the higher level sort of path there, right? And then if you've taken damage and you're not quick again, um, or if you're taking damage or you're not fast enough, right, then you move to the aft deck and then you would just move on to observation. Right. It's, it's sort of that path. Right. Does that make yeah. sense? No, totally. And what I love about it is that it's like, you know, it, maybe I'm a really fast, I'm fast and fast and I'm perfect. But if I really want to explore the game, I have to get hit. You know, there's like all these little like things you have to do kind of a yeah. little challenge in a way, you know, be fast, but get hit and like, you know, things like that. So yeah, yeah, that's right. Like that. Or you could have it where you can like choose, you know what I mean? It's like, satisfying the condition is an unlock and it's like oh you can go through that door right yeah so i sort of was thinking about that too like maybe if you kind of hit the criteria like you're in embark and you're fast like there's like another like mm. gate to the cargo zone that kind of drops open you know what i mean in the stage yeah. and it's like oh, okay go through that door or just proceed right like um i don't know whatever's more fun basically yeah <laughs> that's the idea okay all right so we'll move on now we're going to look at the Default path bosses first. We'll come to the saloon first. So that's where you meet Virgil. So Virgil is a brawler, reversal character, former professional wrestler, but now retired, and he's the bartender in the airship saloon. And so he's kind of like sitting there, like serving up the drinks, you know. But you're coming in. You look like a troublemaker. He's going to, you know, teach you what's what, right? That's the idea. Love it. And then he's got his goons. You're going to be coming across, what is it, C Cesar and Ajax? That's Cesar right. or Caesar? How do you? I like uh, Cesare. Cesare. But, you know, however you want to say it. Okay. Um, yeah. So the, I think my thought there is they're like wait staff or they're like part of the staff for the airship. Mm -hmm. Right. But Virgil, he's like, he's the boss. You know, I mean, you can tell Virgil has worked out more. Like he's, he's beefier for sure. Yeah. He's supposed to, I mean, I don't know. I like, I mean, I feel like Ajax and Cesare, they look, you know, serious, but like of the three of them, Virgil yeah. is the one I probably want to meet the least, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like, uh, I like the uh, character kind of backstory because, you know, he's not, I'm, I don't imagine he's super happy to be a bartender. So he's got a little bit of bitterness too. Like there this is go. where I, end, this is where I ended up. And I, now I have to like take care of these stupid troublemaker. So he's even more, you know, of the force we reckon with. That's right. Love it. I love the, uh, yeah, just this airship. You can see the sky through the kind of that kind of clear floor there. That'd be cool yeah. if like when you smash a guy through and like knock him out, you actually smash him through the floor and he falls down. Yeah, yeah. You do that. Through the, through the sky. So Yeah. Lots of the stages in this level, I do really like to think about like what you mentioned earlier, there being like destructibles or things that you interact with. So like here, right, I think you could have fun with there could be like a drinks cart or whatever, you know, that yeah. you can, like, somebody into like, <laughs> you know, you can imagine knocking over the stools, right? Um, yeah. Lots of fun stuff. 
So next up is Meg. So Meg is an install character. So when her kind of, you know, special skill meter is full, she can call in her mech that you see behind her. Her mech comes in to fight for her, right? And so then you actually kind of control the mech. They're kind of like they swap in a way mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. that for that period. So that's her her super move. So Meg is a brilliant young scientist and inventor. She's just on board the airship she, as a passenger, but she's like sitting in the lounge, kind yeah. of trying to have some like quiet alone time, and is like pretty annoyed because you're causing all this commotion, right? And she can't really think, you know. And so she, you know, you arrive there, and she's like, you know, pissed off and is gonna, you know, shut you up basically. That's great. That's great because she's not really in the adventure. She's just a rando, essentially. Like she's she's just hanging out on the airship. She doesn't like <laughs> she's she's not thinking about your your journey. She's like off inventing mechs. You know, she's on her own journey, right? Yes. Oh, and I guess so. If you beat Meg, you can then be Meg. Exactly. Which is pretty exciting. That's a character I'd want to try. For and sure. then you've got to figure out well, what's her story, right? Where's the scientist going? Right. Yeah. You know, you were just like in her way when you met her, right? And now she's, you know, off on her own adventure. This show, this game is like, it's almost like a massive version of the film Rashomon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've not seen that, but I think I understand what you mean. I like these couches. And I uh, like the, so yeah, the, the flowers on the, you know, on the uh, little center desk kind of coffee table section there's like a drink i imagine that the, on the right that's like an absinthe dispenser <laughs> yeah um yeah and yeah fighting in that in that area would be fun and i just like the idea you you kind of jump into the scene or whatever and then she jumps off the couch you know and and yeah. then she's like hey come yeah. on that's great yeah and then we have ava and lena who I think of them as like, they're part of like the kind of like kitchen or cleaning staff. So they, you mm -hmm. know, they have kind of like the white. So, you yeah. know, like in the dining hall, for example, right? Like, you know, you're seeing them, they're there, like, you know, trying to clean up or whatever. And like, you're causing, you know, trouble. So mm -hmm. uh, that, that sort of thing. Although they can show up in other places too. That's sort of the idea. That's great. So Ooh. this is the speedy path now. So if you're kind of, you weren't perfect, but you were quick through stage three. Mm -hmm. You come to the disembark. And so the idea is kind of like, all right, well, the journey's coming to an end or whatever, right? Like the thing took off and now you're ready to land. So you're kind of at the next station. Um, and that's where you meet Willow. So Willow is a rushdown mix-up character and she is a farseer and an assassin. And she's been waiting for you to disembark the ship and believes that, you know, part of her fate is actually to end your journey right here, right? So you encounter her and she's sort of, you know, there to confront you. I, I first of all love the character. Yeah. That's super cool. I love the fact that I mean her quote, I mean, as a as a metalhead, that's very metal. Okay. <laughs> I see the future, you do not survive. Like yeah. that's a lyric right there. All right. Um and like that would be cool if like some of her moves were sort of like she's like sort of phasing or like what would it, what's her what's her type of character again? Rush down mix up. But that yeah, that's sense. perfect, right? To have that kind of like, yeah. She phases over here. Shoo, yeah. shoo, she's shooting yeah. across the screen and yeah. exactly. you're all discombobulated. That's right. And what's she doing? Oh, she's she she sees the future and knows this is where you're going to end up. That's what she's, she's really waiting for you. That's right. Okay, so tell me about Wisp and Shade. Yeah, so I guess, you know, and I'm still developing this, like, yeah, I haven't yet situated Willow in like an organization in the world, but I feel like she's definitely from a kind of like order of some kind, right? I see Wisp and Shade as also members, more junior members of that order, right? Like Willow is like a full farseer though, right? Yeah. As is evidence from her like super crazy, creepy blue eyes um, mm -hmm. that are glowing. So like Wisp has kind of like a monocle piece that's like kind of fixed, you know, in front yeah. of a blindfold. And then Shade is just like looking like normal human eyes. But yeah, Wisp is like embodied the, you know, spirits of the future or whatever. She's almost like, uh, excuse me, Willow has. They're almost like the Bene Gesserits from. Uh, yes. Yeah. That type that's of a good. Thing. That's a good touch point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a super familiar with Dune, yeah. but I. But you know yeah. that. Much. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I should read up on it because I'm sure there's good stuff, good nuggets to take. Yeah, they're kind of like the you know the witch witchy like yeah. mis mystical witchy like people. Exactly. Love it. Okay. 
What's up? Ne what's next? Okay, next up. So if you're now, if you get on the perfect path, so we'll go back. These are um, not boss stages, right? So you're quick out the gate. When you embark, you can come to the cargo hold. And so you kind of like are in the, you know, hull of the ship, right? I mean, there's this like big giant, like, you know, engine or motor, or that looks like a jet, right? Like in there. Um, in any case, amongst all the boxes and stuff like that. So that's like getting moved in as you fight. Um, if you stay on the, um, you don't get the ultra pass. You don't immediately go to the, la the you know, the, the boss. Then you can come to the aft deck. And this is the sort of viewing deck at the rear of the ship. And so you kind of have this nice like panorama. And then obviously, you know, you would want to have like this awesome landscape there and you know if we figure out how to do it in super cool pixel art it'd actually be cool to see like moving right so it's kind of like you're slowly moving across the land in any case that's the i love that i mean it's very actually like it's an interesting um the right almost looks like a war room to me a little bit mm. i could see that these guys are around this this big, you know, the big table, the big desk that they're planning some sort of thing, you know, like that. But I also do see that there's like onlookers that are peering out and watching the landscape, you know, kind of crawl by. Yeah. Um, um, so the kind of on the perfect path, if you don't finish, but you start down that path, you come to the observ the observation room. Mm -hmm. That's where you meet Quartz. So Quartz is a mix up footsie character. Um, she's a high ranking agent for the United intelligence and she's on a secret manhunt mission and she's been watching you on all these cameras and recognizes that you're a threat that's going to need to be dealt with. Right. So you sort of come in there and it's like, okay, you know, that's to awesome. Close this case is kind of her, her attitude. That is awesome. I love that image is great. And yeah words i have nothing to say but like i'm i'm mostly struck by the by that stage the observation room is just really cool yeah i can imagine all the screens are blinking and you know numbers are kind of reading out and you know like sort of those those great scenes from alien or from movies like that where you know we yeah. all have those etched in our minds you know that's the idea and have, you know, you'd have like the engineers kind of back in the background, like twiddling, you know, knobs and things like that. And yeah, exactly. Oh my God. So good. Cool. And now, so she is a, uh, she works for the, she's works at the ship as, as a. No. So I think of her. So, no? okay. Yeah. So I referenced this. So I'm still fleshing out all the pieces, but there's going to be kind of like a, there's basically like the super city. Right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like it's not quite total world government, but it's like almost like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And she kind of works for like the equivalent of like the intelligence agency. So it's called like the United Intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like a high ranking agent on a secret mission. Right. So oh, she's okay. on board the airship, kind of like sitting in the observation room. You know, she's not actually yeah. like, you know, but because she's like so, you know, she has the uh, clearance. Right. She gets to mm -hmm. just like be in there. Right. Um, Mm, so she's connected to some stuff that's right going on yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah there's a whole bunch of like conspiracies and stuff like yeah this. You know, we'll unfold as you know and develop more of the characters i mean i'm literally kind of like coming up with the character idea and then kind of fleshing out the world and it's a whole iterative process so but as more yeah. characters are created right it's going to get richer and richer and all this is on the obsidian page too so people can go look yeah that. love it so cool and then my thought for stone and gem. So gem is like uh, also like kind of a gave her kind of like a bellboy's hat. Oh, so they, uh -huh. she kind of works. She that goon is like she does work for the airship company. Yeah. Right. Stone, I think of as kind of like a wealthy passenger. So he has kind uh, of like a little bit of a different suit. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was like thinking one of them was like a cadet, but maybe not. It could be. Maybe gem is like a cadet. I don't know. I mean, but she kind of has more of that uniform, right? Yeah, but I guess a secret agent doesn't necessarily have a cadet with them. Yeah, I don't know. You can play I with like it. A, I do like the name. The naming conventions are fun too. So thanks. Yeah, yeah. I was happy with that. I thought that yeah. was fun. Yeah, and like Stone reminds me of like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always been a huge fan of. So yeah, yeah. No, he's great. 
Yeah. <laughs> if you're watching, Steve, yeah, please, please like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. We'll move on. All right, Ooh. so the perfect path, right? You weren't fast, but you were perfect. You come to the captain's cabin, mm -hmm. um, and that's where you meet Zora. So Zora is a puppet control character, and her puppet, as I'm thinking of it now at least, is a cutlass. So she's like a pirate, and she has like mm -hmm. a pirate's cutlass. But she can sort of throw and summon it back to her and interact with it in various ways. So, you know, kind of like Minot's orb, right? Yeah. You throw it out there. But, the, you know, this is a source. It's not going to float, right? So it's kind of like she throws it into the ground, right? And then can kind of like, you know. It shoots back if you jump exactly. beyond There'll it. There'll be ways that she like can that. kind of play around with it. Yeah. Um, so she's an infamous sky pirate, obviously. She's there to plunder the airship. And now you've sort of stumbled upon her as she's like rifling through the captain's quarters, right? And mm -hmm. so you get in there and she sort of has been using you as a distraction, right? But, you know, now, you know, the whatever, the confrontation has finally arrived, right? And so it's like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. now you have to fight it out. She's going to fight to keep her booty. So she's not the actual captain. No, no, she's a pirate. She's there to, yeah, plunder yeah. the ship. But she's Love in the that. captain's cabin. I do like that the uh, captain, uh, captain's cabin. It's slightly piratish. It's like ha it's a little reminiscent of you know, of a Pirates of the Caribbean or a sort of that kind of uh, feeling. So it's, I mean, I guess that's how all captain cabins are. You know, yeah, yeah. All, you know, that's what I know from the movies. Um, this looks to me like a captain's cabin. I don't know. Yeah. Is that a periscope kind of coming down from the ceiling there in that like kind of wind, the uh, that skylight? I think of that as the um, microphone, you know, they like call it down oh. they're shouting the orders from their cabin, but you know, oh. maybe it's both. Yeah. I don't know if they need periscopes if they're in the sky, but maybe. Well, whatever. You'd like to look around still. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's like a, a like furnace or something on the left side of the screen there. It looks like, right? Yeah. That's oh. even warm. It gets cold up there in this sky. Yeah, it does. There's like thin, the not a lot of oxygen. So yeah, yeah. And then, so tell us about Janko and Cyril. Yeah, so those are two of her like pirates. Mm -hmm. So you know, Cyril is kind of like you know the older, more grizzled pirate, and Janko is like the young, more handsome pirate. You know, they're both not as you know clever and daring as Zora, but you know she keeps them around because they're useful. All right, last one. So there's the ultra path. So you are perfect and fast. You come to the engine room. That's where you encounter Hector. Now, Hector is a zoner. Mm -hmm. He's the captain of the airship, and he's currently down there inspecting the engine room. But since you're stumbling in there for no good apparent reason, he you know, just assumes that you're there to sabotage the ship and decides he needs to act accordingly. That's a hell of an engine room. Yeah. And he's the like the engine room master, you said. Well, he's the captain. Oh, he's the ca he's the captain. He's the captain of the ship, so that's why he's not in his cabin. Is he's actually down inspecting Cap the engine room? I see. I see. So I can imagine a world where, you know, you have beaten Zora, right, and then you now are playing as Zora, into this level, and you reach Hector. That's going to be quite a uh... sparks are going to fly. Yeah. 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 I could see them maybe ending up together in the end, though, because they're both, you know, good looking people. Hey, you're the writer here. It's not too late to spin these yarns. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, um, so then what about Juan and Paul? Yeah, so I think of them as they're kind of like, you know, part of the crew. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, the more junior you are, the less prominent mustache. slash exciting is your mustache right and so it's kind of like Juan is like one step down you know he's on his way and Paul's yeah. quite quite green you know so no mustache I do think I remember reading that I was reading about like um sort of the rules of being a captain yeah of an airship and like you can't actually grow a mustache until you've reached a certain like experience yeah you, you have know? to be clean shaven and yeah. then you're allowed to grow a mustache and then it can get more and more elaborate as your rank goes up that's right. Um, I got to say, great faces. Paul, Juan, Hector, like, love it. Cool. Well, that's it. So there they all are. These are our six bosses of the airship. I love it. And, you know, they, 
it is fun to to see them all together and be like, okay, do these guys all make sense in one environment? And I think that they do. Good. I, I'm kind of most intrigued by, is it Meg on the bottom right? Meg. I'm most intrigued by her. Yeah. Just because she's like, she's just minding her own business, really. You know, she just wants to go to wherever she's going. Yeah. Love it. Here's all the goons. Yes. It's huh. interesting. I feel like putting the goons together, I do think I can start to like imagine more clearly what those like the non boss stages will be like. Because imagine it's like you start the level, mm -hmm. you encounter like first just one Paul, and then next it's like, you know, a, I don't know, a Juan and a Lena, you know what I mean? And you start to kind of like, yeah, I don't know, see who populates this world and start to kind of like see the moves, right? And and you can also start to think about how it'll actually be, feel to play like yeah. against two, because these characters are all within that archetype of their of the boss that they're yeah a goon of, right? So you'll have a couple of you'll have a brawler kind of you know bounding around after you trying to grab you trying to throw you then you have like this person zipping around you know right on the same in the same space so that would be pretty fun yeah yeah all right everybody well uh that wraps up another episode of cliff reacts in real time to spencer's level design um so until the next one everybody uh, like subscribe click the bell and uh, we'll see you in the next one